Hey guys, great to see you and welcome back to part two of Blues in the Key of A. So if you didn't see part one, I'll pop a link down below. It's important that you watch these videos in order because they get progressively a little bit more difficult and we want to get each part down before we move on to the next part because we're going from the very basics to trying to get a very authentic Delta Blues sound. All right, and that's the way we're going to do it by just steadily progressing onwards and just getting a little bit more difficult I suppose but introducing new elements and new ideas as we go all right so in part one we took a look at a basic shuffle which can be used to play hundreds of blues songs so very worthwhile checking out and getting down as a first step right now what we're going to look at today is some different ideas about how we can you know play a blues in a so it's a kind of completely different idea and I should just point out that in part one I was using my fingers by and large. I didn't really use a pick. Now, you, of course, you can use a pick, right, and accomplish a lot of what I'm showing you with a pick, but you will reach certain points whereby it becomes a real challenge to try and do what I'm doing with a pick. So it makes a whole lot of sense to try and start using your fingers, all right? Because it's all very well just playing a basic shuffle with a pick, like a kind of... All that's really straightforward and easy, right? You can go through all your one, four, five chords doing that type of thing. But what becomes difficult with a pick is when you do things like turnarounds where you... Things like that can be very, very difficult to play with a pick. Now, of course, it can be done, like I've just shown you. But it sometimes has a more authentic sound when we use our fingers, so I'd just like you to bear that in mind. So let's get started on part two, right? We're gonna play uh, another blues in A, but we're gonna take a slightly different approach. So what I'd like to try and start teaching you in this lesson is how to get better control of your thumb, because that's really important. It can set a beat up and really make it, you know, really nice and steady. So if we take the same A shape that we were using in part one, which is this shape, and you'll be familiar with that now because you've watched part one. Now, the idea behind this is to create a little bit of a rhythm just with our thumb on the right hand. As you can see there, I'm playing and I'm dampening, right? Which is what we talked about in part one again. But I'm using dynamics as well, so what I'm doing is I'm altering the volume. Some of the beats are soft and some of them are loud. Now these are all the little things that make your blues sound authentic. It's all these little techniques. So hopefully you'll bear this in mind, right? So as you can hear, we're gonna play that A, right? Now we're gonna develop that, but first off, just get yourself a nice, or whatever you consider to be kind of nice blues rhythm, okay? Now we're going to swap our D position from part one, and we're going to play this position, which is a different way of playing a D. So essentially, uh, if you could think of a D7 as being like this, but what we're doing is, we're just going to keep those two notes there, but we're going to add an F sharp in the bass, all right? so. Essentially, we're going to use our middle finger on the 6th string 2nd fret, we're going to use our index finger on the 2nd string of the 1st fret, and our ring finger on the 3rd string of the 2nd fret, okay? Now that's a D, and again, what we're looking to do initially is all in the bass, alright? So our D is going to be... Now don't worry if you're thinking, well, it's not sounding brilliant at the moment, right? That's not the point, we're just looking to create this steady rhythm back to A. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to like a standard E, which is, you know, an E major you'll be familiar with probably, all right? And that's just up there if you need to know what the shape looks like. And the little finger can come down on the third fret second string to create an E7, all right? So we can use that as a shape. So, like I say, the first step here don't be fooled into thinking, oh, you know, this isn't that interesting because these are the basics and, and what we're going to move on to once we've got this down is how we can add a little bit of top end, right? And that really starts bringing it to life. So just make sure you spend a little bit of time with the... A, 
Hey. D. Hey. E. Alright, so we've gone through all those chords there. We go back to A. D. And then A. E. And A. Alright, so, very basic. But what we're really trying to do here is educate our thumb into being very, very rhythmic and steady and not miss a beat, just really solid, because that's the key to playing a lot of blues. Now, what we're going to move on to next is adding some top end, like I say, right? And the way we do that is if we play this A shape that we have been using so far, what we need to do is try and add this little finger on the fifth fret first string. Okay. Now it's still an A, we're just playing an A, but we're adding a little bit of top end. So now what we can do is to vary up this blues a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting is to play a kind of... Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going between this A and this A7. And you'll hear that the bass doesn't stop. Now that's probably one of the things that you're going to find, you know, a real challenge when you start to do this. Because when you put this top end in, your bass wants to stop when you're starting out on this type of thing. So just bear with it, it's like anything, it's just time and if you just persist with these things and just keep practicing, you can do any of this stuff, all right? So, bass is going like this and we're going, important to wash right hand here because we know what the thumb is doing, right? But now we're trying to introduce either just the index finger or the ring, or sorry, the middle and the index finger. So you can play, if we're just using the index, it would be like this. Great thing to sit around and practice. In whatever form you want, you can put those notes in the top end where you feel they're necessary. And it, that's just using the index finger. So if you use two fingers, then I'm going to be playing the first and the second on the bottom as opposed to just like the first, right? So it'd be more of a very important to notice that I'm still dampening the strings all right because that gives it that authentic sound as well now moving on to the D chord which we now know the shape of which is this shape right what we're looking to do now is where we were playing the fifth string for the bass for the A chord now we're going to be switching it to the sixth string this F sharp note here second fret sixth string and we're going to stay away from the bottom string here and we're going to play the second and third strings if we can all right so it's going to be more of a so not quite as hard right so we're playing bass When you can combine it with that A, it starts making a bit more sense, right? And then the only other chord is the five chord that we haven't looked at, which would be the E major. And like I said, if we put the, the little finger down on the second string of the third fret, then we have an E7. 
and also it's quite a handy little thing to take off our index finger of this third string on the first fret because we get this which can be a nice sound it's like a hammer on so I'm plucking the third string when it's open and my fingers off and then putting it down and I might do that in unison so in other words whilst plucking say the sixth string and the third at the same time and you get a so once you've done the hammer on hitting this bottom string sounds quite nice so you get a back to the D and back to the A so let me put it all together and then show you how it can sound once you're kind of getting familiar with it and you start getting some of these techniques down. Right, so we start with our A major, long A like this. A7. Just one final thing I'd like to mention just before we finish off and that is with this long A position some people struggle initially to be able to play this because it's quite a stretch okay to to play that position now rest assured that you will be able to do it in time with practice okay our, our hands get to be able to reach further now one thing you can do to help yourself in this way is to take a capo and say place it further up the neck so let's just say on the fifth fret there right now this long a position is much shorter than what it was when we were playing without a capo right so you can practice here and you can practice the whole thing that we've looked at right so go to the d and all the other chords we looked at And so the idea being that once we're comfortable, say, on that fifth fret, then we can move down to the fourth. And what we're doing is we're making that chord stretch a little bit further each time we come down the fretboard with the capo until we get to the stage where we don't need it any longer and we can actually reach this long A. So I'd just like to point that out to you. That's one way you can deal with that should you struggle. Now don't worry too much. I know there were a few elements there that we didn't look at, but they're going to be coming up in future episodes. So don't worry too much about that. I don't want to overload you with too much to do. It's important that, you know, you're not left with a huge workload that you just, you know, you can't concentrate on. It's best to just focus on a few little things at a time. And if you can get some of these ideas down, Things like the turnarounds and things like that, we'll take a look at in a dedicated episode. So there's some ideas for you to think about, all right? And of course, there are lots of little embellishments that you can add to these things. You probably noticed there when I'm playing this D, you can't play. And all I'm really doing is playing, sliding into that D, right? Like so. But don't think, of, like I say, too much about trying to put those embellishments in. It's far better to get the bare bones of these ideas down. So hopefully you'll run with that and work on that a little bit. And when you come back for part three, we're going to take it even further. All right. So hope you've enjoyed that one. And I'll see you soon with another lesson.